Welcome everyone and thank you for coming to this talk on the five ways to well-being. Um, and my name is Jenny Hartnell and I am the service lead for Health Connections Bendit, which is a social prescribing and community development service and we work across all the GP practices in Mendip, so we're actually employed by the GP practices. So, um, the five ways to well-being. Um, the New Economics Foundation created simple evidence-based actions to improve well-being. And studies show that by adopting the five ways to well-being, life expectancy can increase by up to 7.5 years. So, why the five ways to well-being? And kind of what are they really? They are really small, simple, common sense steps, which are free, easily achievable, and anyone and everyone can do them. And they're kind of like your five a day for mental well-being. So the five steps to well-being, here they are. Give. Give your time, your words, and your presence. Keep learning. Embrace new experiences. See opportunities and surprise yourself. Take notice, remember the simple things that give you joy. Be active, do what you can, enjoy what you do and move your mood. Just have to move this speak of you because I've got everyone's faces there. Um, connect, talk and listen, be there and feel connected. So these are really, really simple things, but it's about valuing those simple things that we might already do. Um, and these things help us feel more positive and improve our mood. And what I'm gonna do is just go through each of them with some examples of things that we can do, that people do individually, but also what we can do as a community and what's been happening at the moment um, and what can be easily replicated in other areas. So give, do something nice for a stranger or a friend, thank someone, smile, volunteer your time, join a community group, Take time to yourself, so give time to yourself. Random acts of kindness and pay it forwards. And I'll go through to those last two in a minute. Um, giving can enhance your well-being and also contribute to the well-being of the person to whom you are giving. So often we say no to somebody who might offer us help, but actually them giving that help um, is good for them too. Um, so just some examples that happened during lockdown. Um, I was walking down the street on the way to work and this old lady came out of her house with these two, they weren't red, but they were black, like this, two elephants. And she said, I don't want these anymore. Would you like them? And she gave them to me and I thought, how lovely. And I got into work and I gave one to my line manager, Dr. Kingston. And I said, I was just given these. Here's one for you. So I handed her one and I kept one for myself. I don't know what she's done with hers, but I suspect she might have... Um, pass hers on to somebody else. Um, also, when I walked to work, there was um, a house that has a beautiful garden here and nearly every day there were little posies that people could pick up and take. Um, so what a lovely act that woman or man in that house would never know who picked up those posies. Um, so those random acts of kindness, you can even join um, a big movement and become a racktivist. So a racktivist is a random act of kindness activist. And there are 33,000 of those racktivists across the world in 89 different countries. So those are just ideas of random act of kindness. But also kindness is contagious. Um, I was in a Costa Coffee a while back and I didn't have any money. It was the end of the month and I thought my card had some money on it, it didn't. And this sixth form student said, don't worry, I'll buy you from Prune College. Said, don't worry, um, I'll buy your coffee for you. And I thought that was so kind of her, this, this young girl buying me a coffee. And so I said to her, I'll, I'll pay it forwards. I'll, I'll buy someone else a coffee. Um, and what we actually did was we spent an hour going around town saying to the cafes and the bookshops, would you like to be part of this pay it forwards? Lots of people already in, in, in town had already, were already doing it. And they all said yes. So in an hour, five shops um, had signed up to sort of paying it forwards. This place here had already been doing it. Um, so this sixth form student kind of inspired this um, action that we then did as Health Connections. I don't think she probably knows that she did that, but how amazing that she did. Um, obviously since COVID, um, 
that stop, but we're, we're picking it up again and, and I'll show you later on a, a video with a lady from the bookshop. So keep learning the next one. Try something new, rediscover an old interest, sign up for an online course, fix a bike, learn to play an instrument or how to cook your favorite food, learn about those around you. Um, learning improves self-esteem, keeps us connected and involved and helps us adapt to change and find meaning in our lives. It has also been shown to help prevent depression in later years. So this is about really learning and doing something that you love and enjoy. Um, I've just got some examples here. There's the most fantastic training, which is online, um, on uh, suicide awareness training. It's really short, but how amazing if we get a whole community to sign up to do that learning and support each other. There's also a great um, website called Learn My Way, where you can learn how to use a keyboard or a mouse through to um, learning how to get an email address and sign up for universal credit uh, through to um, how you do whizzy things on Excel. Um, our service Health Connections Mendit is a Learn My Way accredited training centre so people can just sign up for that and do that for free. Um, also how about learning how to use the NHS app? There's an amazing app that allows you to um, view your medical records and order repeat prescriptions and book appointments. Or you could do things like, and I'm sure you all have, um, over COVID, we got a picture of a tap here because my bathroom taps broke. And so I decided I'd never done this kind of thing before to watch some videos on YouTube of how to change taps on a, on a bathroom sink. I watched the videos. I asked my two teenage sons, I got the, um, ordered the tools online my two teenage sons um, changed the tap in our bath, taps in our bathroom. One, uh, my older son did the cold tap, and my younger son did the warm, the hot tap. Unfortunately, we forgot to turn the hot water off, but it was a great learning experience for all of us. Um, so it doesn't have to be online; it can just be some anything that you enjoy, really. Um, so take notice, catch sight of the beautiful, remark on the unusual, see the beauty in every day. Notice the changing seasons, savour the moment, whether you're on a train, eating lunch or talking to friends. Be aware of the world around you and what you're feeling. And um, paying more attention to the present moment, to thoughts and feelings and the, to the world around us can boost our well-being. So um, on that tip, um, taking notice, um, obviously there are loads of things we could have used here, but I've actually just chosen to do that, taking notice of how we're feeling here and now. Um, there's this great website called Every Mind Matters. Um, and if you're all okay with this, um, we're going to do two minutes of mindful breathing. And if it's something that makes you squirm and think, oh, I don't want to do it, don't worry, because you're on mute and we can't see you. So if you want to go make yourself a cup of tea for the next two minutes, do. But it might be something really useful for you to pass on to a friend, a family member or a child because it's so quick and so easy and just gives us two and a half minutes just to stop and just to check in with ourselves. So I'm going to have to stop sharing now and hand over to Emily who's going to share that bit of the video because we can't embed it in the presentation. So bear with me for a few minutes. Um, Emily is now going to be seeing if she can bring that up. So as I say, it's two minutes. Is that working? Yeah, if you click on the, yes, there we go. So often we're caught up in life's demands with no time to stop, but becoming more aware of your own thoughts and feelings and what's around you and accepting the present moment can help improve your mental health and well-being. Doing this affects both the mental and the physical you. Some people call this being more mindful. Focusing on the present means paying attention to your thoughts and feelings right here, right now. Breathing exercises are a great way to focus on the present and be more mindful. Doing this can also help when you're feeling stressed or anxious. This short video will take you through how to do a mindful breathing exercise. Firstly, settle into a natural, comfortable position.
When you're ready, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Breathe naturally, noticing the sensations of the breath entering and leaving the body as best you can. Allow your shoulders and neck to relax, focusing on your breathing, just being aware of it. Focus on how your body feels. What sensations do you notice? Do you feel your feet on the floor or the feeling of your clothes on your skin? Take this time to pay close attention to physical sensations from the top of your head right down to your toes. Notice what you're thinking about right now and how you're feeling. Just take the time to notice your thoughts and feelings without judgment and without trying to change them. When you're ready, take one more breath and try to bring this awareness with you into the next moments of your day. Breathing techniques like this one can help to centre you in the moment at any time and connect you with the present, which can help if you're feeling stressed or anxious. Thank you, Emily. Are you okay sharing back with me? Um, just screen share again. Can you, can somebody just do a video to say that you can see that now? Yes, I can see that. You can get back to the slideshow, yeah? Oh, hang on. No, back to um, the webs. Oh yeah, is it? Yes. Is it quite small, the slideshow? No, yeah. can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Okay. Um, so we just watched this um, video um, on Every Mind Matters and actually the introduction for that was about a minute. So the breathing was probably only another, another minute. How often do we actually stop to take notice of ourselves and how we're feeling? So often we think that's a take notice is about what's going on around us, but you know, really important to touch base with ourselves. There are some really good um, other sort of breathing um, exercises on our website, on our resources section. Um, that you can find if you just go to our website. Um, so going on to be active. Ah, oh, this is what happened before that after the slideshow. It, okay, it's messing around a bit, but go um, go for a walk or a run. Step outside, cycle, play a game, garden, dance, move more. So as well as improving physical health and fitness, being active can also improve our mood and overall mental well-being and decrease stress, depression and anxiety. So there are lots of things we can get involved in. Um, I'm aware that we're sort of saying things online, but there's this fantastic Couch to 5K, um, which is online um, and you can print that off or you could ask someone like Health Connections Mender to print it off for you if you don't have access to the internet. So week one from literally I think it's sort of running for about 30 seconds or so through to week nine and you're doing 5k. If you're anything like me, I did the 5k and it took me 58 minutes every time I did it. I don't think there's ever been a slower five, 5k runner. Um, also, there are things like this active at home booklet, uh, which is exercise for people who can't get out and about, who just want to be active in their houses. Um, the health walks, I know certainly in Mendip and I think across Somerset, they're still going on following COVID um, advice and recommendations, but also kind of why not pass on that information yourselves? You can print off leaflets like this, stick it up, up at home or in your office just to show people the benefits that improving sleep helps maintain healthy weight, managing stress, improves quality of life. So there are lots of ways that it's not necessarily just us doing these things. It's about us sort of spreading the word. Um, so connect. Um, being connected is associated with good mental health and well-being. Um, so I'm kind of going through different ways of being connected here. So that connecting, that inner kind of connecting with ourself and, and having quiet moments of just touching base with ourselves. Um, connecting with our circles of support. We've seen during COVID that it's so important, those circles of support, those amazing kind of support groups and street groups that have just popped up. Um, but us kind of 
sort of mapping in our own heads who who are who is my sort of support network who is who's there and it's not necessarily friends and family it could be anyone out there um i remember when my dad was staying with me he would had cancer and he was having treatment and i was really worried about going to work and i just said to my neighbor would you mind if he needed it taking him off to ruh he wasn't going to need it and my neighbor said yeah of course and that allowed me to go off to work feeling confident that he was looked after and she didn't didn't need to do it but just that amazing offer of support from her was really valuable to me um, so as I said the first one connecting to yourself connecting with your circles of support and then connecting to your community um, often I think when we think of connect we think straight away of community how we're going to connect out but there are all those levels and connecting with nature with pets and animals I know for sure that my cats have been really important to me are always really important to me um, and then connecting with a wider sense of belonging um, and a sense of purpose. It could be part of being a great big movement or spiritual beliefs. So that kind of outer level of, of being connected, which actually then goes right to our core, I suppose. Um, so connecting to things in the community, there are lots of community directories out there. So we set ours up and then um, other areas across Somerset, we, we gave them the templates. So they've set up similar websites. And so you can look on any of these websites. Um, so living, sorry, Wellbeing South Somerset, Taunton Wellbeing Zone, Living Better in West Somerset, or Health Connections Mendip for Mendip. And there you can find out about so much support in your community, whether it's Mindline, Every Mind Matters, Active and In Touch Befriending Service, the Macular Degeneration that do um, friendly phone calls. So there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of groups and services that people can connect to, but it's about raising awareness of, of where people can, people can find out about that support. Um, also connecting um, during COVID, we designed, well, one of our amazing health connectors designed this lovely postcard. And we got those out and about across Mendip. So people were giving those to neighbors, were writing to each other, and the organization Active and In Touch took some and gave them to their volunteers. And their volunteers then sent them out to the people that they were befriending. Um, also, we saw this amazing wellbeing and mental health booklet that was in Cumbria. And I contacted them and I said, this is such a fantastic book. Can we copy it? And they said, yeah, of course you can. So we changed all the information in the back, put in all the local services. And we printed 47,000 of those, one for each household in Mendip. And we did a call out in Mendip for volunteers and we had volunteers for every street, neighbor, every neighborhood in Mendip. And the community delivered those booklets for their own community. So how amazing that, first of all, that organization in Cumbria allowed us to use their work, their booklet, and then the fact that all those community members just connected with each other, with their neighbors by putting this leaflet through the door. I've got this ripple effect thing here of when these kind of things ripple out. Um, also, we've things like talking cafes, which are places where people can come together, meet other people and be signposted to support. Those have rippled out. We started ours in 2013. They've rippled across Somerset and we've even got them as far afield as Australia and New Zealand. They're such simple ideas. Um, during COVID, we haven't been able to, well, we have started again doing talking cafes, they've gone online, but we started this week a talking bench and we had a fantastic day um, yesterday. We went on this bench, we we're on this bench here in town on market day, talking to people, signposting. One man said that he had been a befriender, but the person he befriended had died two years ago and he wasn't sure whether he could do it again. And I spoke to him and he said, actually after this conversation, I think I'm gonna do that befriending again and find someone else through Active and In Touch. So really, really valuable ways of connecting by just putting up this flag in the middle of town and talking to people. Um, also, community connectors. Anyone can become a community connector. We've got 1,500 of them across uh, Mendip. And they, on average, have 20 signposting conversations a year. So that's 30,000 signposting conversations with those 15,000 community connectors. And basically they are human beings who are saying that information that was on that directory that I showed you before. So all that support that's out there, it's fine having a directory, but actually having human beings talking to each other and signposting is really important. 
So we want people to be able to say, I know what's out there rather than if only I'd known that. Anyone and everyone can be a community connector. We've got them across Mendip and South Somerset asked if they could use that model too. And they've now got 450 community connectors. And once again, that's something that people have that's rippled out and we've got them um, across, not we've got them, but other areas have asked them if they can use that too. So that's all about connecting. And just in half an hour, we thought, okay, who can we find? We need to find some people to video. Um, so here's a 30 second video of people we could find um, who are community connectors. Um, I'm Jenny, really I'm me. service lead for Health Connections Mendip and I am a community connector. My name's Will, I'm a member of the public and I'm a community connector. My name's Molly, I'm a care navigator and also a community connector. I'm Tina Gaysford Waller and I run a bookshop in Froome in Somerset called Windstone's Hunting Raven and I'm a community connector. Um, I'm Rebecca Hall, I'm one of the GPs at Froome Medical Practice and I'm also a community connector. I'm Chloe and I'm a care navigator and I'm also a community connector. I'm Amanda, I'm an administrator at the health centre and I'm a community connector. I'm Shane and I'm a community connector. So I think that's just us showing that you know anyone and everyone can be a community connector, whether it's a GP or a member of the community, a policeman, a taxi driver or a hairdresser, anyone can do it. And it's kind of what people do anyway. Um, obviously during COVID, um, we had posters like this all around town and around Mendip of think of others and consider your actions to be kind. So that kind of fits into the five ways of well-being of giving. Connect and reach out to your neighbours. Well, that's the connecting part here. Make the most of online groups. That could be being active or keep learning. Um, support um, vulnerable or isolated people. That's kind of taking notice of who's in your community and what's going on. And share accurate information and advice. That's keep learning. Um, we're just coming to the end of, of the bit of me talking. But for four minutes, I'd just like to show you how um, I explained before that we have that pay it forwards. Um, we're now working with a bookshop um, and anyone can do this with any of their bookshops. Um, and they are asking people to buy a book and if they want to, to pay it forwards. So to put some money in a pot, a virtual pot for somebody else. And they're giving us those books. And what's going to happen is we if we meet people at Health Connections Mendip or the GPs, who could benefit from a book. It could be they choose from a book from the list or also that we contact Tina and say, um, Boris is really interested in gardening or Margaret's really interested in carpentry and they will help find that book. Um, so as I say, these are really, really simple things. But I think through listening to Tina, you can see kind of what a big potential ripple effect it can have. So this is just four minutes of this and then we're gonna go back to breakout rooms to all chatting. I'm Tina Gaysford Waller and I run a bookshop in Froome in Somerset called Windstone's Hunting Raven and I'm a community connector. Um, so with our project with Mental Health Connections, Pay It Forwards, we're going to be doing as an organisation lots of the five ways to wellbeing that they recommend individuals do to help against isolation and to help them be personally well. So one of the strongest things of that is connection. So we're really connecting with the people that we're going to be gifting the books to. But at the same time, we're connecting with people in the community who want to be part of that. So it's that forging a connection between us, between people who need support and between people who want to give support. And that is just such an amazing place to be as an organization and as a bookshop. So that's what kind of gets me going and getting out of bed in the morning. Um, and then the other thing is like learning, learning what it is, what what we need to give in order to help people who who need to find something through books whether it's you know direct advice about their health or whether it's just that sense that there's somebody else out there or a story out there that connects with them that helps them understand the position that they're in whether it's loneliness whether it's illness whether it's just needing that that sense of connection to a different time and place so that's what we're doing and um give i suppose we're asking people to be putting their hands in their pocket and giving, but every time you give, you're receiving something back. You're receiving that feeling that every time you do something to help your community, you know that there's somebody out there in your community who would be prepared to do the same. And I think that's really enriching as well. So 
you know, yes, we're giving to mental health connections, but we're building a stronger community around our bookshop. And that for us is, you know, we're getting so much more from doing things like this than, than I feel like we're giving. So all of those things feed into our, our ability as an organization to do the same thing for ourselves and for our community as we're asking people to do for themselves, to stay well and to stay connected. So yeah, really excited to be part of the Pay it forward. Uh, I think, I suppose, as well, it's just taking notice of the people around you, what's happening in your community. We're smack bang in the middle of town. You know, people pass us by, they come in, we hear conversations. We really feel like we take notice of what's going on in our town, and, and then we want to be active in finding what that need is and being part of it. And for me, that's always been a big part of the bookshop. It was never just get in behind the counter and flog loads of books. It's about the power of books to connect people, the power of a bookshop to be a community hub and you know the power to work with other organizations to kind of fill those gaps in the community and that's the kind of stuff that town-based bookshops can do that you could never get from Amazon that you could never get from places and people that are completely distanced from you so yeah I think organizations especially small shops small businesses in town have got a real part to play in stepping up and being part of that, part of the connection, part of taking notice about what's happening in their town, being active and finding what it is that they can do, giving and then in the process learning. So yeah, we're all in it, aren't we? So um, can you all see, um, Emily, can you see the screen each way, five ways to wellbeing? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, um, what an amazing um, person Tina is, but just how an organisation can take the simple idea um, and just kind of be part of that, that kind of community and, and that response that we can all give to supporting each other. So um, each of the five ways to wellbeing positively enhances wellbeing. Um, when you have positive experience, it can change how you think, feel and behave. Now, um, Sorry, um, I'm not somebody who knows about brain chemicals and things like that. So I spent uh, five minutes this morning dashing around the practice asking some doctors um, if they could um, give me something to say in this presentation. Um, so what one of them said was, when we are connected to other people, we benefit from raised oxytocin. When we are working towards an achievement or doing meaningful activity, then our dopamine system is activated and after we've exercised or done the activity, we will have raised serotonin and endorphins. So for some people who these things might seem a bit too simple, too easy, you know, there it is that it does actually affect our brain chemistry. Um, and another thing that, um, so to illustrate this in a very sort of simple way through Connect 5 training, um, is if we, do these things it affects what we think and what we feel affects what we do so for example if I tell that story of my boys changing the tap in my bathroom even remembering it makes me feel happy um, that might affect my you know the way I feel and the way I think and then what I do maybe next time I feel more confident to do some DIY as well even thinking it might be fun um, so Here's just some information if you want. You can stick up the five ways to wellbeing on your fridge. You can pass it on to friends, family, and neighbors. Um, and here they are again, the five ways to wellbeing. 